Hello, welcome to the Mad Batter channel. My name's Chris. Recently, I decided to upgrade my rather ancient EF 17 to 40 F4 lens for the newer and much wider RF 14 to 35 F4 lens. There were three principal reasons for this. First, I wouldn't have to use the EF to RF adapter, making the camera and lens smaller and lighter. Second, the lens has image stabilization, which works with the um, IBIS in my R5. And finally, of course, 14 millimeter is much wider than 17 millimeter. So having had the lens for three or four months or so, I thought I'd do a quick review, not a technical review, but just how I found the lens. And also to look at a lot of comments that have been online about whether the lens is actually 14 millimeter at its widest setting. This is because, as people have noted, there is a lot of distortion, and there is, before you apply lens correction. And that when the lens correction is applied, the field of view narrows, therefore it can't be 14 millimeters. Well, I'll deal with that a little later in the video. So onto the physical characteristics of the lens. It's 99.8 centimeters tall, 84.1 centimeters wide. It weighs 540 grams and the filter size is 77 millimeters. Now onto the lens controls, which as you can see here are quite simple. It has three rings. The one nearest the camera is the zoom and it's about 70 degrees to go from 14 to 35 millimeters. And the middle ring is the manual focus ring and at the front is the ubiquitous RF control ring. You'll see there's a small lens hood, which is the Canon EW83P. And the only other controls are the autofocus manual focus on off switch and the image stabilizer on off switch. The other thing to note about the lens is that it is not internally focusing. As you can see at 14 millimeters it is extended. As you zoom out the extension disappears at about 20 millimeters and then it extends again as you get to 35 millimeters as this video shows. The extension at its maximum is about nine millimeters. As for focusing, I'm afraid I don't have a means to record the screen while in photo mode, but here's how it performs in video mode. At 14 millimeters, it's actually quite diff difficult because everything's in focus. But once we move up to 35 mil, you can see how it focuses in video mode. Of course, it's much quicker in, fo in photo mode than video mode, although I haven't tested it with something like motor racing. But then again, with a very wide angle lens, you're not going to be using it for sports or motorsport, etc. So in my view, the focusing is snappy and more than adequate. Turning now to image quality, I have to say I found the images sharp, provided I've nailed focus and contrast is pretty good. Here are a couple of test examples. Bear in mind that these are from RAW files and so there's no sharpening applied out of camera so inevitably they'll be slightly soft before editing sharpening is applied. So this is at 14 millimeters. Nothing has been done to this image at all. This is the same in image which has been sharpened and then and this is 35 millimeters Again, nothing done to the image, and this is the same image with a bit of sharpening. Quite hard to see. You can see the difference. But now we'll zoom in to have a look at how sharp it really is. So here we are with the 14 millimeter image, which has had no editing, and we zoomed into 150%. The point of focus was somewhere on this bush here to the left, but the image looks pretty sharp to me. If we then switch to the image that's had sharpening applied, 
it looks even sharper, maybe over sharp or crisp. So moving over to the edge of the image, this is the um, unsharpened image. Um, bear in mind it was a quite a slow shutter speed and there was a bit of a breeze, so some of the leaves may have moved, but it looks sharp to me. And then if we move over to the image that's had sharpening applied, that just brings out the crispiness and that looks fine being the edge of the image. Moving on to the 35mm image, uh, again zoomed into 150%, that looks perfectly fine and sharp to me. If we move over to the sharpened image, you can see it does sharpen up a bit more and once you zoom out to 100% that would look absolutely fine. Then moving to the edge of the image, that looks not quite as sharp maybe, but perfectly good bearing in mind that the uh, plane of focus is probably in the back area here rather than at the front of the image and also there'll be some movement from the breeze and if we then switch to the sharpened image that sharpens up very nicely the background which is where the focus with focal plane will be looks sharp obviously things closer to the camera are slightly out of focus but i think overall this is a pretty good performance so now I'll get to the main point of this video, which is the 14mm setting. Canon's recent wide angle zooms have either been 15 to 35 or 16 to 35, but this one stretches to 14mm, and the difference in the angle of view between 14 and 15 is noticeable. But there's been a lot of criticism about distortion, vignetting, etc. at 14 millimetre, and whether when you correct it, the angle of view is in fact 14 millimetre. Well, I'll try and deal with that here. So here we are with a view of the image at 14 millimetre with no lens correction applied. As you can clearly see down this side, this wall is bowed, there's bowing in the building and there's significant vignetting in the corners. Remember where this edge of the wall is. Now this is the image after lens correction has been applied. You can see all the bowing has disappeared as has the vignetting but there's less of this wall here visible. If we go back a minute you can see both there and at the bottom the corrected view is narrower than the uncorrected view. But then if you go move the lens to 15 millimeter which is this view you'll see that this is clearly not as wide as the corrected 14 millimeter view so this is the corrected 14 millimeter and this is the 15 millimeter so i think we can say safely that the uncorrected 14 millimeter view does provide a lot of distortion and vignetting but lens correction gets rid of it all but narrows the field of view but the corrected 14mm setting is wider than 15mm. So either the view is 14 and a bit millimetre with the uncorrected one 14, or the uncorrected 14mm is in fact wider than that, 13 and a bit, and when it's corrected it becomes 14mm. Whatever the answer, the corrected 14mm view is wider than the 15mm view, and therefore I'm prepared to say that the lens does in fact give you a proper 14mm view. For information and by way of comparison, here is the 14mm uncorrected view and superimposed on that is the outline of the views at other focal lengths. The white one is the 14mm view after correction. The blue is a 15mm view. The red is a 16mm view and the green is a 17mm view. So hopefully that all makes sense. I hope you found this useful. If you have, perhaps you could give the video a like, and if you haven't done so, consider subscribing. But in the meantime, many thanks for watching.